is the uh, top 500 list, and uh, on the top 10 machines are two from Japan currently. There's the uh, uh, one uh, joint uh, University of Tokyo University of Cuba machine, uh, of course PAX, and then there is the uh, paid computer, which used to be number one in Japan. Um, so uh, we're not going to rank lower tens. But if you look at other lists, um, here is the um, here is the APCG list. Then here you find that actually the uh, K computer is number one, and also the uh, of course tax is number four. And if you look at other metrics like this, the green five hundred, you see that the top four machines are from Japan. And uh, although technology is Pascal, there are a whole bunch of other GPU Pascal based machines. But for various reasons, um, I think Japan is really pushing for efficiency. And as such, the uh, four machines are, uh, uh, although combinations are uh, various, um, the four top machines are in, from Japan. And also, these two machines, number three and number four machine, and actually number two machines as well, and, and, and to part, some extent, uh, the one machine, Sumabe 3, they were all, to some degree, AI-focused machines. So, the most efficient machines in Japan, in terms of green, or each, or not to say HPC machine, they are AI addictive focused. And I'll tell you why that's so. Uh, uh, so there is a uh, ongoing uh, Japanese infrastructure mission HPCI. I won't really go into details because uh, uh, that's not give some details on the panel, but this is conjoining all the centers, uh, all the major centers of Japan, including the K computer, and also the major university centers, and we'll soon accommodate, uh, like to accommodate these uh, AI machines in your infrastructure as well, and also uh, shared storage. Um, so the national plan is, in terms of HPC is to have the flagship this machine maybe every 10 years, post K development, but also we have other tier, the uh, that's a tier zero center. The tier one centers like Scuba and Tokyo Tech, uh, we build in, uh, intermediate machines uh, to fill the gap. Uh, and that's, all, that's always been the plan, and that has so far been the plan uh, ongoing pretty smoothly. So it's not to, so, uh, not to, that's not to focus K. Each center, major centers are asked to uh, present a 10 year plan, and this is updated every year. Of course, these are speculative, things change. But by and large, there's been like like year two, maybe a uh, year maybe two year delay during the center. But by and large, uh, these the plans are being met. So capacity wise, um, post, when post K arrives, the capacities of these uh, aggregation of these centers also will likely match the capacity of the post K. Uh, so post K, um, this has been on in the works. Uh, it's, uh, it's been um, I can't really say too much about it. It's in the final uh, detailed design phase, and um, uh, we're spending a whole bunch of money over one billion dollars uh, on the kind of JPY, which is about one billion dollars, and uh, plus, you know, there are inclined contributions in Fujitsu, and what's not written here is you know, we will probably spend about twenty million, about, 200, about uh, uh, several tens of millions of dollars each year to operate the machine because the electricity bill alone will be one, like thirty million. So that's huge. Uh, but it, it is a central machine. And as an analysis, it'll be a one based processor. Again, I can't go into the details. On base mini core machine uh, with, uh, uh, with the vector extensions that they have to do to arm. And it's been recently announced that this will also accommodate the P16 for AI workloads. Uh, it'll use 3D stack memory, uh, a terabyte D, uh, memory bandwidth, much like. Um, uh, the GPUs and Xenon flies, and also this will feature the latest uh, Goku 3 uh, uh, network, which will have uh, mammoth injection bandwidth. And it'll be a very, very large machine. It'll basically replace the uh, the Hayden computer uh, at the at Regan at site. Um, let's, skip, let's skip that. Um, unfortunately, as all we also know, last year uh, on August 10th, right after IC, uh, there's been a announcement of a delay uh, of, the, uh, of the production of the deployment of the machine. 
So we used to say 2019-2020, now it's uh, deployment 2021-22. So unfortunately, since there's been a delay, uh, uh, and uh, there's been various efforts to uh, fortify machines at <coughs> tier one centers to fill the gap. Uh, but uh, some of the application, uh, the app, some of the work are ongoing. There's been there's uh, nine priority application areas uh, from uh, rough design to basic science to clean energy to uh, environment uh, new devices. So, so each of the team is set up by kind of the respective application area teams. Uh, these are joint teams set up by the representative organizations. Uh, not, not, a, not, not, not and usually not a weekend. So many of these teams are, for example, headed by people in the University of Tokyo. Um, so, uh, so these nine uh, areas, uh, they get about three million, uh, two and a half to three million dollars each. And they get time, K, and liquid computers and HPCI to develop the post K applications and increase this. And we have four, just to continue, we have the four areas, um, exploratory application areas, um, uh, which deals with these advanced uh, applications like uh, uh, some of the new machines, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the number one machine now in Japan is the Oakforce Max at uh, uh, the Tokyo facility, but jointly operated by Tokyo and Scuba. And this is a very large uh, night's landing machine. About 8,000 mil. It's about the same size as Cori uh, that NERSC has, or also the um, Trinity machine at, uh, uh, at, uh, at the San, uh, San Diego Los Alamos. Uh, but this was manufactured for Jitsu, and the difference between Cori and this machine is it has a user Somni path, which is more of an Intel standard internet. But it's in full bisection uh, configuration. So this is probably the largest um, Omni path configuration in the world with about 8,000 injection ports. Uh, so the total aggregate uh, performance, network performance of this machine, so the peak performance went by petaflops, but the, the peak uh, injection bandwidth into the fabric is one point, and by section as well as 1.6 petabits per second. So which is a pretty awesome uh, number, and that's one of the reasons why network of force packs, along with uh, post K, has gotten very high scores on the HPCG uh, and possibly on the cut. Uh, the machine coming up next month, uh, Tsubame 3, uh, as we've seen, this is the uh, number one machine on the grade 500. Uh, well, it was only measured on a quarter of the machine, but uh, we believe that the uh, uh, full configuration will be even better. Uh, this uh, GPU based machine uh, is 4.1 petaflops, um, so it's about half of the first max, but for some maps, we can uh, very, it'll be excellent as well. Um, so it's very Tightly designed machine, uh, both designed with HPE. Um, it's a pop level blade. Uh, it's got 40 gigabits of injection port from each blade with four GPUs. It's got very large memory and a very large um, NVMe capacity. Um, and, and very, very dense uh, configuration. We've got 60 kilowatts per rack. But each of those blades, amazingly, can be hot plugged. There's no cabling at all. So the service is just, just instantaneous. So just kudos to HPE uh, for having a blade infrastructure and uh, implementing our design at this time. Uh, we're building a new data, uh, new data center room. It's a very small machine, it's only 20 racks. But the efficiency, uh, one of the things we're very proud of is the power efficiency of this machine is very high as in the week by hundred. But that was a machine and global one measurement, if you know how they measure, but also the PUE of this machine is 1.03 on uh, calculated average of meters. So the machine's power versus machine's facility power is almost the same. So, so the machine will only use about 0.78 megawatts, but the facility power is almost negligible. So the full 12 pound clock machine, this will be under a megawatt. Um, finally, uh, like I said, AI is the big boom. And um, so I think in some ways I'd like to uh, uh, there, there, there are suspicions that Japanese government is no longer interested in HPC. They're investing all the money they have. <laughs> and um, that may be partially true about this. Uh, the three ministries have set up three respective AI centers, national AI centers, in the three national big labs like AST, uh, RECAN, and also at NICT. 
and uh, they also they're roping HPC people, and uh, I got roped in. I'm 15% AST now, and the AST, uh, the AI Research Center, we got about one at FTEs, headed by Dr. Sajid, uh, renowned uh, scientist in linguistics. And, but um, what we're trying to do is to establish um, AI research, but with um, HPC helping out in order to uh, facilitate uh, HPC research in terms of very large HPC infrastructure, AI research in terms of large APC, uh, AI infrastructure. So that's why we set up a joint lab between the IST and the Tokyo Tech called um, uh, Real World Big Data. The name is not very important, just say it's Big Data, AI, and HPC. Uh, so we had Swami 3, but we are also building a machine on the AIST side, uh, which is called ABCI, and this is supposed to be a uh, machine that I'm designing that will use a lot of the successes of the Swami 3, but really uh, a gear that focused towards AI. And the AI performance, AI operations performance, uh, I mean, it's at minimum 130 petaflops. It could be 200, it could be more, it could be 700 petaflops. Uh, and this will be deployed March of 2018. Uh, we have already have a test machine, a uh, well, small machine, uh, which is an uh, uh, 8 petaflop AI, or uh, it reduced precision called AFC, and this was the number 3 machine on the paper. So uh, the real ABCI, like I said, more than 130, and um, it'll have lots of features we're planning, uh, including efficiency. But efficiency and so forth, they are gearing, uh, customizing the AI. But uh, what we really is trying to, what we really try to do is bring HPC capabilities tailored for big data AI into standard data centers. So it's not for us to say this is a great machine to brag about this machine big or fast or anything. The real purpose of the machine is to be served to serve as a template, as a blueprint, so that we can have the copies of these machines everywhere in Japan. Because that's the only way that we can proliferate these kind of uh, efforts. So, um, so we have these three machines now. Uh, yeah, Steve Cloud, there's also a machine that we can about half the size, upcoming Swami 3 uh, in about a month. We have maybe CI uh, in about nine months. And uh, uh, we have, you know, there are some, we do have some early plans, whether we can, there are engineering studies to build uh, an exascale AI, AI machine, uh, uh, possibly by 19 or afterwards. So, uh, again, like infrastructure is very important for also research R&D, and uh, as outlined by US uh, white paper, and I think in some ways in these types of AI big data infrastructures, uh, and also K being an enhanced for AI and so forth, I uh, think uh, we are well, um, actually um, moving very fast forward uh, with the conversions of HPC and AI infrastructure. Okay, that's it. <laughs>